I have, I have it on my chin. The button is barely <laughs> open. After all the money, all the man hours, the months that we put into putting a brand new engine into this car, here we are again, ripping it all back apart. It's been a good eight months since we put the new engine in the car. I've been dailying it for eight months, so a lot of the issues that were gonna come up have come up. So let me catch you up on what's going on in the past few months, starting with the first night that the car came out. I will story tell outside. So the very first night that I pulled the car out, this is what happened. You already know, man, it's 1 a.m. We outside right now, a barth broke down, middle of the street. My shifter linkage popped out of its socket, so we gotta take everything out, put it back in while it's... Yo, can you relax, bro? I'm trying to talk to the people. I start recording and it starts pouring, bro. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. So we took everything apart. And I'm gonna try to show you guys the problem right here real quick. So right there, baby. Yeah, see that? This one popped out of its place. I popped it back in. Yeah, that was the issue. I had to take out the battery terminal. All the... Hey, yo. <laughs> All that stuff out the way. And now, instead of my car being stuck in whatever gear it was stuck in, we're back to neutral, baby. If you're ever in the parts store and you come across a baby hammer, me and Adam got this for the memes, but this thing has come in clutch so many times. This was the only hammer that was gonna get into this little gap. And like I just did, hammer my linkage back into place. They were right. Baby hammer for the actual win. We got this as a joke too. They were, they were right guys, not about the size, about the motion of the ocean. Damn straight, trip gang. Then Adam tried totaling it as a welcome back to the road gift. You're, uh, you're pretty close, Adam. Just a tad bit close. Unfortunately, that was the only fun and games that the Abarth wanted to play with me because after that, it was all downhill. The plan was to break in my new clutch and after the clutch was breaking in, get the car tuned for the new turbo, you know, all my other mods, intake, downpipe, all that stuff. So the night after I broke my clutch in, I took my ECU out, shipped it out to DI Corsa in Florida and waited for it to return. <sighs> this is fun with a tiny wrench. Why is this so heavy, bro? Mendy, one of them 10 pound batteries. This doesn't make sense. Can this thing come out, please? All right, I need two hands. That is unnecessarily difficult to remove. A moment we've all been waiting for. ECU is removed. Now I gotta send this to Florida. I shipped my package through Staples. Hopefully it makes it there safe. Let's go, baby. Everything's put back. Let's get this first start. Oh, lights on the dash. Key over here. Neutral, handbrake up. Clutch pedal in. Huh, that's not good. Good. And I took it for our first drive. Everything was phenomenal. Blow off valve sounded different. Car was pulling. It's it was great. But the morning after, the literal morning after I got the car tuned, this happened. I didn't think much of it. I recorded it just in case. I thought eh, maybe it's a little bit of condensation, new tune stuff. I don't know. I was like, I'll just disregard it for now. Wish I could have just disregarded it because the night of that day, this happened. So obviously that's a pretty big cause for concern when the car is billowing smoke like that. I immediately got 
just completely stressed out. I was like, this this engine only has 40,000 miles on it. Why could it be doing this? I was thinking head gasket, I don't know, piston rings. So I immediately got to researching, seeing what I should do to figure out what this could be. And I got a combustion leak tester. We tried that first to see if there was any exhaust gases getting into the coolant. We've been pumping this for like a minute. Nine years. Nine years. It's only been a minute, but nothing so far, so that's fun. Then we got a leak down test. So now we're gonna do a leak down test to see where air might be escaping from. The car is running perfectly fine and it randomly at very, like once per drive at a random time, it'll smoke up. I don't know why, we think it's a head gasket. So we're gonna do a leak down, see the health of the engine overall and also see if it's a head gasket. So yeah, that's our second plan of attack. If this doesn't lead to anything, We'll see from there. For people who are unfamiliar, a leak down test, you fill a cylinder with 100 PSI and you see where, or you try to listen or see where air is escaping from. If you want to see if it's a head gasket or not, like we are, the air would be coming out of our coolant reservoir. So you'd hear or see the bubbles coming out. So coil packs out, spark plugs out, and then we'll go from there. So these are the spark plugs and coil packs in the order that we pulled them out. I'm not sure which right to left, one to four, but this is the first cylinder, a lot of oil on the threads, pretty oily on the tip as well. The second spark plug, pretty dry. Spark plugs look fine overall besides the oil, but this one was dry. The third one, a little bit of oil on the bottom-ish, bottom part of the thre uh, threads. And this is the last one, dry overall. So too oily, too dry. And it'll be pretty obvious which two cylinders the oily spark plugs came out of and which two the dry ones came out of later in the video. But in any case, after we had pulled the spark plugs and coil packs, it was time to do the leak down test. Now the leak down test, we had moved each cylinder that we tested to top dead center and then filled each cylinder with 120 PSI. And we gradually turned the knob until each cylinder was up until 120. This is what the first cylinder looked like. We had almost no leakage on any cylinder. And this is the video that I took while we were listening for where the air was coming from. I don't know how well you can tell on video, but me and Adam listened all over the engine for where this sound might be coming from. And we determined that it was coming from the oil cap. And that's the only place that it came out of and nothing out of our coolant tank, which is what we were expecting. It was a hissing out of the oil cap, which according to Google searches and some research is normal. What's also normal is some leakage from cylinders. And I had none in this first cylinder. Literally, it was spot on. So I was like, OK, that's weird. We'll move on. Coming out of the oil cap, normal, no leakage. I'll take it as normal. And in case I did anything wrong, this is the next cylinder that we did. I recorded me filling up the cylinder. To keep things brief, the other two cylinders were the same thing. I filled them up, we had zero leakage, and there was some small hissing coming out of the oil cap. So I determined that it passed the leak down test and we got quote unquote good results. Everything seemed fine, everything seemed normal, each cylinder. Then we did a compression test. The compression test numbers were a little bit low on each cylinder, but I'm pretty sure that's because the battery was a little bit dead when we were doing that. We were actually doing the compression tester. Funny enough, we should probably do another compression test because when we did that one, the battery was completely dead. I was jump starting the car every day to, to get it started. So we were jump starting it, doing the compression test, jump starting it, doing the compression test. So that's why the numbers are a little bit low, but in any case, we did the compression test. These were the numbers. So everything seemed mechanically okay. All those big things kind of cleared out. So then we started to evaluate the symptoms, when it happens, why it happens. Those symptoms are, if I'm stopped at a light or I'm idling, for example, if it idles for too long at a certain spot or a certain way, it'll start smoking up. It'll start smoking all the way up. Like that clip from nighttime. And occasionally, if I let it idle before I turn it off, for nighttime, let's say, and then I come back in the morning and I start it, sometimes it'll be a lot of smoke off the cold start. All those symptoms point to valve guide. The valve guides in the cylinder head are messed up. So when we came to the conclusion that it was either my valve guides or my valve seals, we were like, let's bore scope the engine and see what's going on in there. So this is my first cylinder, nothing spectacular, pretty regular in there. Second cylinder, we saw that puddle over there. We're like, hmm, 
That looks like oil. And sure enough, it was. So oil was leaking into this cylinder. Third cylinder, we've got an exclamation mark where the detonation occurs. That's probably a serious problem, but no oil. So moving on. And our fourth cylinder, huge puddle of oil on the right side, coating the entire piston. So from there, kind of confirmed our thoughts that something was leaking oil into our cylinders. It was a junkyard motor. It came out of an automatic dart and it has 44,000 miles. Oil changes being neglected, cheap oil being used could have all contributed to this. So I, I guess I'm not surprised. Unfortunate, but I'm not surprised. So I hit up Donnie and Rob at New Jersey Speed Shop to see what they had to think about it. And they actually had a complete cylinder head for sale. So I was like, all right, I guess I'll pick that up. I'll cut back to me and Adam taking apart my old motor and exchanging the head for the one that they had. Dang. Damn. Adam, the bolt in here, everyone always forgets about. Oh, that one bolt. This guy loves to start hammering things without taking all the bolts out. Oh, chill, son. Damn. Wow, look at that. First, we have to take off this multi-air brick because if you can see here, there's one bolt here, one there, one there, one there. So there's four more on the other side that are underneath the multi-air brick. Yeah, rest it slowly, because it, it looks like there's solenoids. Actually, no, lift it, rest it on this, rest it on this. Oh my God. We're propped up on an extension. Hopefully that's fine. These things aren't being depressed. Let me know if that's a big deal or not. Now, like I was saying, we have one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four on the other side. And then there's also one and then two right there. So now with these 10 bolts, there's actually a specific way that you're supposed to go about removing them. There's a pattern. All right, send it, bud. This is definitely gonna take some cracking, bro. Mm. I feel like. Mm. Oh, he spun my cam out of timing. Fantastic. How do we do our timing after this? If we take the whole <laughs> the whole head off? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if I take it out of timing because it's always out of timing now. Oh, baby hammer. Just the right amount of aggression. <laughs> Carefully now. Don't drop anything off of my... What is that? Oh, put it down, 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 put it down. Damn. What's falling? The cam followers. Uh-oh. We had to evaluate those. Whatever, now they're going to have some, some ground marks on them. What? Damn, I completely forgot about that. How many dropped? One or two? Two. two? Lift it up. Carefully. <laughs> this is so bad. All right, go. Carefully, carefully. One's going to drop. Okay, wait. Okay, okay. Go. What's holding me? There's a gasket. Oh, okay. Should I drop? Hold on. Okay. They dropped into my hand. Both? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Oh my God. I hope those aren't, those can't be cylinder specific, right? These followers basically ride on the spring like that. Then the cam hits this thing and that push actuates the spring. That's what this is. Now we can pull off the head. Just going by what looks obvious here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bolts that we have to take off. I'm going to give Donnie the head with the spark plugs in as a little gift. As a little gift. <laughs> Cylinder head bolts are going to be the tightest. I'm flexing this. I feel it flexing. Wow. You saw the flex. You're turning red. I see the red. I don't see the flex. Uh, I mean, maybe I should just... How do I hold this to be straight on the bolt? And also... Just like, what is that angle? You want me to give it a shot? <sighs> Adam's just a little weak from his sickness, you know? I used a sh different bar and I was being oh, cautious. Wow. Excuses, man, all the time. Okay, I'm like sold me. Where is it? What? There's also a pattern for this, which I'm gonna put on screen right now. I really hope my car's problem is a cylinder head, because if it's not, I'm gonna be so upset. This is an exciting moment. The head is about to come off of my blown engine. We might potentially see why it why it was knocking. This should be good. Because we never bore scoped this. We could have. 
Yeah, we but we have. never. I told them not to because I wanted to wait for this moment where we take the whole thing apart and see how bad the damage is. I'm not expecting anything catastrophic. That's that side. That's that side. Cooling. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, I can place it straight down, right? Yeah. It's actually not too bad. Um, it was definitely running lean a little bit. These piston tops are kind of clean. Yo, can this camera? MF. The piston tops are, they're not super clean, but they've got, they've got spots in there. You can see that. I don't know. You guys tell me, what do you think about this? This actually does not look too bad to me. Well, mission accomplished. We got our head off. We can take this to Donnie now and I'm going to get my, my new rebuilt one. No piston destruction. How is our board? I mean, I see cross hatching here still, so it looks good. Right, if you can still see the cross hatch from mm -hmm. it's... It actually does not feel that bad, which is insane. What the f... What happened? <laughs> Imagine we swapped the engine for no reason. No, it could have been, it's, it could still be the rod bearings. It could have spun a rod bearing. So, the bottom, bottom end, yeah. At least you have a good motor to build a race car motor on that belonged in the car. Yes, true. Now we can build this. We can learn how to build a motor on my very own 1.4 right here. Doing pistons, rods, all that stuff. So that should be fun. You guys can look forward to that as well. Whole lot of no microphone activity, but we made it to New Jersey Speed Shop and I almost cracked my cylinder head in half. All right, garage is a mess, but we have a head. Brand new one. Well, not brand new, but pretty new. Let's yeah. show you. Let's, let's show them. Oh my boy. Sheesh. Look at that. That's nice. That is very nice. So, the specs on this. This cylinder head has all new exhaust valves, all new intake valves, it has new retainers, uh, it has new guides, um, reused valve springs, those don't go bad. Um, and then it's fully machined, and it uh, looks just as fantastic as you guys can see. What was the upgraded thing? Like the upgraded... Valve guides. It has bronze valve guides, upgraded valve guides. They are bronze. I just said the same thing twice. <laughs> we'll be back with you guys when we have all the parts assembled and the car is ready to go under the knife, so see you then. So that's a brief summary of the past six or eight months. And that is how we've ended up like this. Wait. With the engine outside of the car for the no. third time. I need to take out the torque mount. Maybe the fourth time. That's what I'm... So now we have to replace our cylinder head, fix all the oil leaks that are currently going on, rebuild the axle for real this time. And I don't know what else. The first thing that we're gonna do is take off the cylinder head or replace the cylinder head. So we have to strip the entire motor of everything that would be in the way. So let's get that done. Everything is taken off the motor, intake manifold, exhaust manifold. This is pretty much everything we have to remove to take the cylinder head off. Only thing now is we're going to take off the valve cover. We don't have to do this right now, but we're going to set the timing. So to set the timing, <clears throat> this timing tool that I got when we timed this motor originally, this will only allow the cam to lock in one position, which I'm pretty sure is top dead center, but that's all that matters because when we install the new cam in the other head, um, this will do the same job of locking it in one position. So. Whichever way this locks it over here, it's gonna be the same thing when we put the engine back together. So we have to spin this until that matches. So keep spinning on it. Camshaft locked into position. Crankshaft is locked into position. Our resident expert is here. Time to take this head off. So when Jason got here, we pulled off our valve cover, got ready to take the cylinder head off of this engine. We noticed a lot of red paint where red paint definitely should not be. This was the first case of that. We got our multi-air brick off, pulled our cam carrier off, got all of our lifters out. And I'm gonna describe this in more detail later in the video, but I was also having a tapping sound coming from my engine. And when I asked Donnie about it and he heard it, he said that it sounded like a bad lifter. So I was like, all right, we'll see when we take the engine apart for the cylinder head. And when me and Jason were taking our cam carrier off, one lifter got stuck in the carrier. We had to pull it out with the needle nose and that same one had a lot of heat marks. So we were like, okay, that was the problem after all. We got our cylinder head off. Jason almost tripped and dropped it like I did with my other one. And if you look inside the engine, there's a lot of oil in there in those two cylinders. And also on the cylinder head, there's oil coming out of the valves it seems. So that was our two problems after all. 
We didn't have any audio on those clips because I'm an idiot. So anyways, Adam, okay. Adam's back now with audio. This is the condition of our cylinders. Um, you can tell very clearly which two were leaking oil into them. If I touch the thing that looks like oil, is, it, is there going to be oil on it? Wow, look, it's oil, guys. Whoa. Crikey. More oil. Wow. So these two cylinders are clearly the ones that were leaking the oil. Engine looks like it was burning right, at least. So now, what do you have to do, Jason? Prep our surface for a new head gasket. Duh. Duh. And then put the new head on. Day two, the reason the engine is out of the car is because this is our first time as a collective group swapping an engine. There were some oil leaks um, all over the place. Not all over the place, like two, three places, but it's good to take it all out, see where we made mistakes, fix everything properly. So the engine is out to address the oil leaks and makes it a lot more convenient to do the head. So that's why it's out. I think we've already diagnosed where the two oil leaks are coming from. We'll talk about that later. For now, the cylinder head. We found our smoking problem. Next problem. Now the second problem was that my engine was making a ticking sound. I brought you to the speed shop. Rob and Donnie said that it was my lifters or one of my lifters. So I was like, all right, we'll deal with that whenever we swap the head. Now we've got everything out. When we pulled our cam carrier off of our cylinder head, there are these lifters. These lifters go on top of the exhaust cams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Moves up and down, cams roll on them, pushes the valve springs down. A lot of friction. Everything should be, you know, lubricated, moving smoothly. When we pulled the cam carrier off, all of our lifters came off smoothly, except for this one. This one got stuck in the actual cam carrier sideways. That doesn't sound very frictionless to me. So me and Jason had to pull, take a plier and pull that out of the cam carrier. And we're assuming that's what was making my ticking sound because if this thing is getting stuck or, you know, not really moving properly, that might be the ticking sound or these are just, they're just not functioning properly. I don't know how this kind of lifter would go bad. I don't really first time seeing this, but maybe it went bad. Anyways, that one got stuck. So then me and Jason get to looking at our lifters and they start to look devastating. If you guys look at the side of this lifter, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Those markings are not supposed to be there. That is, again, friction where friction is not supposed to be. All of the lifters have these markings on them. Literally every single one. Obviously, that's not good. If we look at my Abarth lifters, actually. Now, this motor may have been blown, but at least me and the last owner uh, took care of the oil. At least I hope. Anyways, if you look at the Abarth, there's, those markings are not there. There's obviously some friction marks there, but not in a crosshatch pattern like that. So that leads me to believe the negligence of the oil is what caused all my problems. My valve guide's going bad, my lifter going bad. So if you have an Abarth 500, if it hasn't been stressed to you enough, take care of your oil. Um, that being said, I guess we basically found all of our problems in our cylinder head, right? I think so. Cool. Now the plan is we have to prep the block for the new head gasket. We have to scrape all of this remnant stuff off and then we're gonna put the cylinder head on top of that, but the cam carrier situation has to change because if we were having some kind of problems in there, um, in this cam carrier, like obviously me and Jason had to take a plier to pull that lifter out. I don't, and there's all those heat marks on them. I don't wanna reuse this cam carrier in case there's any kind of damage. So what we're going to do is, we looked at both of my cam shots and this one looks to be in better shape than my old one, the blown motors. So we're gonna take this camshaft and put it inside this cam carrier with new lifters. These guys do too much talking. It's very bad. To scrape this stuff off, the first step is um, using a scraper. We're going to use some chemicals probably later, or maybe just brake clean. I don't know. Depending on how well this does. I got a 5 8 carbide scraper by Lyle. Let's see how effective this is, because apparently they're very good. All the huge chunks and stuff have been taken off with the scraper. So now I'm gonna just go over it with a scratch pad and WD-40, clean up the rest of it. And then we're just gonna clean it up and get ready to put the head on. The scotch brand and the WD-40 put in almost as much work as that scraper. Probably more, honestly. The scraper got a lot of the big stuff off with ease, but this, if you scrub it hard enough, it is clean, clean. The advice was given by very knowledgeable people, so. I'm not surprised. Um, I was. What? The packaging on that, doesn't it have like a pot on it? Oh yeah, it's for like cleaning dishes, but boy does it clean the deck of an engine really well. <laughs> so now we're gonna clean this off with ATF and see what it looks like. You know, this, I don't know how this is gonna work. <laughs> I don't wanna get some on my hands. I just brake cleaned the whole surface and man, it is silver. This is probably as good as it's gonna get. I'm not complaining with this. This looks good enough to me to put the head on, the gasket on. So let's do that. Let's get that done. 
Get to work, peasant. We're actually gonna vacuum all this stuff out because a lot of the dust and stuff, the scotch bright dust, the gasket dust, all that stuff is sitting on top of all of these napkins. So it's better to just vacuum this stuff out. What's the verdict? I had gasket time. This has been the most nerve wracking thing to take care of since I got it. Like what if this thing gets bent? What if my head gasket gets messed up? What if I install this? I just did that all over where I just cleaned. What? Good one. And I only find out that I got messed up when the car starts smoking again. <laughs> Head gasket. That doesn't look messed up. All right. That looks nice. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Calm down, god damn, sir. What? Bending the shit out of you. Um, let there be proof that if this engine does blow up, it's because I just did that. Just kidding. It can afford some flex, bro. 50 comments in. What did you do? Yeah. You know what else can afford, uh, you know, some flex? Nothing. Nothing. Not nobody. That nobody in this garage. A little wallet, huh? Boom. Head gasket down. That looks like it lines up just about right. This is slightly terrifying. To say that I'm nervous is an understatement. Well, I'm not. So hold this, bucko. One dowel on the head now. The second dowel is going to go in here. It's like a bit of a tighter fit. On that dowel. On? We're on. Okay. Boom, baby. New head installed. We still have to put the head bolts in. We're going to do that right now. That's half the repair done right there. And then, no, it's not. Cam carrier, camshaft, multi air brake. Valve cover, spark plugs. Yeah, but this was the stressful part, you know? Why? Bro. Just a head, bro. You always get a new one. Do you understand that if we mess up what we just did right now, we will literally total this engine? Potato, potato. I don't think you're aware of that detail. New engine swap out, buddy. Come on. You're going to pay for it? We'll pay for it. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Please one thing that I... Please, please subscribe. Adam. We didn't clean the we didn't clean the head bolts, the area where they go into. That wasn't so bad. Oh my devil. Can you add that? <laughs> oh, that's dirty, so that's good. That's cleaning it out. God, how <laughs> deep did you put that? I can't even see it. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. He makes it progressively worse. In this one, I told him, calm down with how far you're pushing it down and how tightly compact it is. And here we are. Making my way downtown. I should put this right down when you're cooling channels. Oh my god, look at how wet it is though. Hmm. <laughs> Dude, look at how much came out, bro. That went in dry. See, it needs to be compacted that much. Otherwise, we're gonna clean it. Nice and dry in there. Let's go. Okay, now we can install our head bolts. Fresh head bolts, straight from the steeler ship. Cylinder head bolts, you got 10 spots, right? So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And basically what you have to do, you can pop in all your bolts, right? And just put all 10 of them in. And you're gonna tighten one through 10 to 22 foot pounds of torque. Then you're gonna back it up 90 degrees Retighten it to 22. Do that for all 10. And then you're going to do 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And you're going to repeat that cycle twice. The order is critical. So step one, like I said, 22 foot pounds, back it up 90 degrees, reapply it to 22, not back all of them up 90. It's the one you back up, instantly bring it back to 22 foot pounds, and then 90 degrees all around, and then 90 degrees again. 22. 
I'm like watching him do this and also trying to think of anything that we might have forgot all the way as we're torquing our torque to yield bolts. I think we did everything though. That's one sequence down. Then back to the 22 torque tallinis. Now I can see why engine builders do that because I had to go about 130 degrees to get 22 foot pounds. And I think that's because this is the first bolt that gets torqued down. So it's going to have the most pressure. But when everything else is settled around it, oh, it's higher. Right, right. There. It's getting closer to 90 with every yeah, other one. With every other one. It's not a slap. And, and now all of them have to go to plus 90. I can make it look like effortless. Okay, slow down, bro. seen the memes but this next 90s do not snap the head bolts <laughs> okay please fasten your seat belts kids oh there we go damn daniel <laughs> <laughs> please move for the closing doors bing boom Those are terrible. What, the outside? Yeah. Why is that? They're tight and blast. They have the least amount of, like, they have the most pressure on them right now. Oh, no. No, because, like, everything keeps sinking down, sinking down. So these that got tightened in the beginning aren't at the same position as the ones on the outsides. <sighs> Donzo, baby. Head is torque. That's a good place to leave off, right? What? What? 